So today we'll be starting with the numerical problem on pile foundation. The first example is a 12 meter long 300 mm diameter concrete pile is driven in a uniform deposit of dense sand. Water table is at great depth and is not likely to rise. The average dry unit weight of sand is 18 kN per meter cube. Use NQ is equal to 137. Calculate the safe load capacity of a single pile with a factor of safety of 2.5. We have to take angle of internal friction as 40 degree. Now, first I will be doing it for the driven pile. Second one is your pile is in dense sand. Here in this case, we will only work for the ultimate load, not for the net ultimate load. So the ultimate uh, bearing capacity will be given by this expression as this soil is of uh, sandy type so we'll be using c is equal to zero so there will be sigma bar nq plus 0.5 gamma b n gamma now the third term will be negligible in uh, as compared to the second term so uh, leaving behind this QP, qpu is equal to sigma bar nq now we know that in case of dense and critical length will be calculated up to 20 times the diameter of file so 20 times of diameter of pile will be 6 centimeter so up to this 6 centimeter will have a increase in the effective stress and after that we won't be having any increase there will be constant effective stress after 6 centimeter now we'll be computing effective stress gamma into l so gamma into l and l is your critical length critical length is 6 centimeter so gamma into 6 this is 18 into 6 is 108 kilonewton per meter square now the Net ultimate load will be given by the point bearing pressure uh, multiplied by the bearing area. So we'll get the ultimate point load as 108, 108 into this is sigma bar into NQ. NQ is 137. This one. Now you will be getting sigma bar NQ into AB. So you will be having QPU is equal to 1045.86 kN. Now this is uh, the schematic diagram showing you the vertical stress to a depth till 12 meter. Up to 6 meter you will be having uh, increase in the effective stress and after 6 meter there is a constant effective stress. And the diameter of pile is given as 0.3 meter. Now in order to compute this skin friction load this will be skin friction uh, uh, multiply by the area surface area now fs will be given by k into sigma average into tan delta and this fs as will further subdivided into fs in this particular region 6 meter fs into as1 for this particular surface area and then second one is your fs2 into as2 will be using k is equal to 2 why we are using k is equal to 2 just because this is concrete pile right and this is dense sand case so we'll be using k is equal to 2 now this is k into tan delta delta is the angle of wall friction in this case we are having different material pile and soil so we'll that's why we are using this term delta now delta is equal to 30 is given right so we are using now delta is equal to 30 is given delta is equal to 3 by 4 phi in case of dense sand and concrete pile so 3 by 4 into phi angle of interfiction is given as 40 degree so you will be getting delta is 30 degree so on on using all these value in this particular expression you will be getting capital qf right so till 6 meter depth you are you will you have to take this average and after this 6 meter you will be uh, taking the full 108 right so QF is 1057.807. Now you will be getting this ultimate point load as this uh, QP plus QF, right? Then uh, safe will be given by the ultimate divided by factor of safety. That comes around 841.452 kilonewton. Now, now this is another problem in which we have to calculate the ultimate load capacity of pile right so this is 50 mm side square section concrete pile that is 15 meter long is driven in a deep deposit of uniform clay the laboratory unconfined compression test on undisturbed sample indicates an average value of qu unconfined compressive strength as 75 kilonewton per meter square right we have to take alpha is equal to 0.8 now this is also a case of dense sand or we can call it as a clay so this is a like sort of stiff clay so we have to compute this effective stress till this, uh, this much length that is known as critical length 
so critical length can be found out by 20 into d that is 6 meter and in this case the uh, water table is at ground level so in this case we will be having effective uh, unit effective stress as 18 into 6 minus 10 into 6 so you will be getting 48 kilo newton per meter so the effective stress will increase from 0 to 48 kilo newton per meter square to the length uh, till 6 meter and after 6 meter it will be constant now in case of clay soil we'll, we have this formula for computing this ultimate load capacity so qu will be equal to cub into nc into ab plus alpha is your addition factor into cu average into as so this is at the tip of the pile this is at the surface area of pile right so cub will be equal to your cub will be equal to qu by 2 that is 75 by 2 you will be having 37.5 nc as per Scampton we have to take 9 ab is the base area of pile right and this is square pile so that's why we are using 0.45 into 0.45 and alpha addition factor is given 0.8 and cu average will be same uh, whatever we are getting at the base and as is your 4 into d into l so 4 into 0.45 into l is the length total length that is 15 meter so you will be having this uh, qu as 878.34 kN. now moving on to the example problem 3 so in this case we have to determine the allowable pile load capacity of 40 cm dia driven concrete pile as shown in figure now we have to take n value as equal to 160 now this pile is basically driven into a stratified deposit comprised of loose and soft clay and dense sand so we are having depiction like this 3 meter 6 meter and 5 meter and the uh, soil uh, fill properties are also uh, shown in this particular figure now now what we have to do basically in this case uh, for loose to medium dense medium sand we are having formula for the critical length computation that is 15 times d in case of dense sand we are having 20 times d so first of all we will check whether that criteria is passing or not so critical length for loose sand will be equal to 15 into d 15 d means 15 into point 4 that is coming 6 meter now this is 3 meter that is lesser than 6 meter right so we are in that particular value now for dense and critical depth is 20 times d so 20 into point 4 that is 8 meter right and in case of dense and also we are having 5 meter that is less than 8 meter right so we are coming into that particular uh, region so there will be an increase in effective stress from that particular point to 3 meter depth and in this case also you will have a, as a increase in effective stress from this particular point to this particular point now now sigma sigma average 1 will be equal to here 48 plus 0 by 2 means from 0 to 48 so we have to take average that comes around 24 kilo newton per meter square now sigma average 2 will be computed like whatever we are getting here that is 96 plus 146 right 96 plus 146 by 2 that is 121 kilo newton per meter square right so how we have calculated these average unit weights this is 0 this is gamma into d or means gamma into l so you will be getting 16 into 3 that is 48 now this 48 will come down this 48 plus as uh, it is surrounded by water table so we have to take 18 minus 10 and for the remaining length 6 now we have to take some of this so we will be getting 96 as the stress at this particular level now in order to find out the effective stress at this particular level we will be using this 96 then uh, gamma summers that is gamma saturated minus water table into the remaining length 5 meter so we are getting like this now the total load will be given by the ultimate load at the tip plus skin friction load so uh, we will be using this expression to get this QUS 3963.97 kN we are having factor of safety is equal to 2.5 so we will simply get the allowable load as ultimate divided by factor of safety now moving on to the example problem 4 so the example says basically the precast concrete pile of size 50 cm by 50 cm is to be driven in a clay strata the unconfined compressive strength of which is given as 110 kN per meter square we have to compute the length of a pile required to carry safe working load of 450 kN with a factor of safety 2.5 we have to use addition factor as 0.6 now we know that this soil is clay one so point bearing can be found out using this expression cub into nc into ab plus sigma into cu average into as so you'll easily get this qu now qu will be uh, can be found out by this 
the load multiply by the factor of safety so load is given 450 kilo newton right safe working load is also given so safe working load multiply by the factor of safety will give you the ultimate load now on putting this ultimate load on a left hand side and putting all the relevant things on right hand side you will be simply getting this length as 15.2 meter now group action of piles so basically why we are using this group action when we are installing pile on an individual uh, fashion so most of the time it arises that the pile may not installed into the ground in a vertical fashion uh, it it can it may inclined to one uh, direction so that's why we are using pile in group right so the minimum number of pile that uh, one has to install in ground will be equal to 3 piles are always used in group when a single pile is used as a driven pile there is a certainty uncertainty regarding vertical installation of piles hence in the case of driven piles minimum number of pile used are 3 where is in case of board piles see when you are using board piles where you are making an excavation we creating a hole in the ground so in that case uh, in that case uh, the vertical alignment is very easy so in that case uh, we can uh, easily use these board piles right so we where in case of board piles verticality can be assured hence single pile can also be used however we always provide group of piles now this is your schematic diagram showing you a pile cap above the ground right so this is these are your piles and above it we are having pile cap and the pile caps are loaded concentrically by a load p so this is our pile foundation where pile cap is resting on ground or we can say pile cap below the ground now in case in case of expanding soil at the top layer free standing pile group is used right so if we are having uh, if we are having an expensive type of soil so free standing piles are basically used if your soil is expanding type to avoid ground tightening pile in sand should begin at center and moved outward right so that uh, so that there may not be any ground tightening we are uh, installing pile at first at the center and then moving on the outward direction in the diagram shown below 1 2 3 4 see this is the basic uh, arrangement in which one has to proceed for the installation of pile so first pile will be driven in this particular point then 2 then 3 4 5 then 6 7 8 9 10 12 13 so we have to move like this in an anti clockwise direction right see in this case also we are looking like an anti clockwise then anti clockwise anti clockwise only we have to move around now the ultimate load capacity of pile group so the ultimate there is a formula for uh, finding out this ultimate load capacity of pile group we are using this formula and this formula says basically the group efficiency can be computed like the ultimate load capacity of pile in group divided by the product of the number of piles that are used in group multiplied by the ultimate load capacity of single pile now now this is stress distribution beneath this single pile so when you are using the single pile and it is loaded by q amount of load so the stress distribution will be like this now in case of pile installed in group there is stress distribution like this this one right basically in this case you will be having overlap of stresses so it it can be more like this now point bearing pile so this is a stress bulb showing you for a single pile this is for the pile group and in this case you are finding the overlapping of stress zones now friction piles so in case of friction pile uh, disturbance of soil during installation of pile and overlap of stress zone are various piles may cause group efficiency to be less than 1 right so in case of our friction piles when you are uh, installing these friction pile uh, very close to each other so in that case you will be having group efficiency less than equal to less than one just because there are overlapping of stress zones if spacing between these piles in group is increased then efficiency may approach unity so uh, there must be uh, there must be certain uh, distance between the piles in which we are getting the maximum efficiency right so that will discuss in subsequent portion of this pile foundation now minimum spacing between piles as per is code so 2.5 times the diameter of pile in case our piles are point bearing piles right center to center distance must be equal to your 2.5 times the diameter of piles for friction pile it must be three times the diameter of pile for loose sand or fill deposit we have to use this two times diameter now in case of non circular pile right so most of the time it uh, 
and the case may arise like when we are not having a circular type of file in that case we have to find the diameter of pile for computing for computations like to find out the ultimate bearing capacity of pile so in that case what we are doing we are simply making this rectangular uh, shape and we are uh, finding out the diameter like this so in case of non circular pile diameter of circum described circle will be taken as the diameter right so if we are having shape like this so we will be some circumscribing the outer corners of the pile and we will find out the diameter that will be regarded as the diameter of pile now the ultimate bearing capacity of pile group first is your clay the group of pile may fail as block failure or individual pile failure so this type of failure generally occurs in case of clay soil where the piles that are installed in group either they will be fail in group either they will fail as a full block or some individual failure may be there now this is arrangement showing you this this is the width of pile group b these are individual pile installed right this is a square pattern and these are half of the diameter spacing is given like this sss now in case of clay block failure generally occurs when your spacing is less than 2 to 3 times diameter so when you are putting a spacing within this uh, zone so you will be getting block failure individual failure generally occurs when your spacing is greater than 8 times the diameter of pile so these two points we must remember while doing the computation for the group action of piles now in block failure soil is bound by the perimeter of pile group and embedded length of pile is taken as one unit or block right so we will be taking the perimeter of the entire block and we are treating that group as a single unit ultimate load capacity of the pile group for a block failure is given by this is the ultimate load capacity of a group right so this formula also we must have to remember before doing any numerical problems related with the group action of piles cub into nc plus alpha cu right cub is your undrained strength of clay at the base of pile group nc is your bearing capacity factor that we are taking equal to 9 for a deep foundation alpha is your average addition factor over the length of block then c is your average undrained strength of clay over the length of block right now value of alpha is equal to 1 in case of pile group block because there is an interaction between soil particle in a pile block with the soil particle adjacent to the block right so so in case of group action we are taking this alpha is equal to 1 just because we are considering the pile block as a single unity and the interaction of soil with that pile block is also regarded as a soil so soil soil we are taking this alpha is equal to 1 in case of different materials we are having addition factors differently so value of alpha is equal to 1 in case of single pile so when we are considering only single pile so we have to take alpha is equal to not equal to less than 1 in case of single pile means individual pile qg for individual pile failure is given as below qug is equal to nqu right and uh, so in case of individual pile failure so what we'll be doing we'll be taking uh, we'll be first find out the group failure by group action then we'll find the ultimate load capacity of group considering single pile failure right so we'll be using this formula qg is equal to nqu and the various safe load capacity various safe load safe load capacity can be found out by the minimum of this this uh, particular factor and that particular factor that we have discussed so the minimum of qug and nqu divided by the factor of safety will give us the safe load now pile group in sands so in case uh, in case uh, in case of your pile group in sand it has been observed that the group efficiency of driven piles in loose to medium dense sand is greater than one sir right so group efficiency in case of loose to medium dense sand will be greater than one this is because soil around and between the piles get compacted due to the vibration caused during the driving operation right so when you are driving pile inside the ground so there may be there may be compaction of the adjoining soil near the pile so you will be getting this group efficiency greater than one in case of loose to medium dense sand whereas in dense sand the other phenomenon is not true right so in case of dense sand we will not be getting this efficiency greater than one for design purpose we never take group efficiency greater than one hence an efficiency factor of one is commonly assumed in design greater than when we are not using equal to one we are using in design part right now so in my next lecture i will be discussing about the numerical problems based on whatever we have discussed now that is group action of files